may sound crazy, but you can do this too. All of it. It's easy. How do we know? Because we've made it easy. At DJI, we created the flying camera as you know it. And there's a good chance that the drone videos you've seen online were shot with one of our cameras. This time, we started small, so you can dream big. We created your first personal drone, but we're still squeezing in big power. It automatically follows you or whatever you want without a bracelet or tracker, avoids obstacles, and comes packed with a 4K stabilized camera, 27 minute flight time, and a whole lot more. This is the DJI Mavic Pro, and this is the DJI Mavic Pro Unfolded. Cool, this is Chunky. So today we're talking about the Mavic Pro. Now the Mavic Pro came out in October 2016, so quite an old drone i can't believe how old it is um now i didn't buy this drone for a couple of years mainly because one i couldn't afford it and two uh, i was still quite happy with my fratman free standard at the time but obviously uh, one of the things i liked about this drone it had a far better range than my standard um, i bought quite a few things to the standard to give it a better range but this knocked the spots off it really Cost a little bit more. Now I bought this off Amazon Warehouse um, for a good price. I think I got it for £800. Um, unfortunately, DJI have discontinued this type of drone. So let's get into the spec of it. So yeah, it's got, um, it's the Maverick Pro was announced in September of 2016. The Maverick Pro wasn't released until late of 2016. Uh, and this was the first Mavic series. So this is the very first of the Mavics. Um, the drone had 4K video, flight range of 4.3 miles, uh, 6.9K, uh, a flight time of 27 minutes, which is pretty good. At the same time, GoPro was going into the drone industry. Uh, GoPro, I was looking at making a, a GoPro drone uh, and I'd be honest, at the time, it looked pretty good. You had like a backpack. Uh, you could use the GoPro camera. You could detach it from the drone uh, and do your what you usually do with a GoPro camera. And then you could attach it to the drone and fly off. But anyway, I think what had happened with GoPro, they obviously got wind of DJ was bringing out this drone. Uh, and, it, and it was quite similar. Not everything. I think, if anything, the Mavic Pro was a lot better. But... GoPro rushed it out about a couple of weeks before the Mavic Pro come out. Uh, and as you probably know, the GoPro Karma started falling out of the sky. <laughs> so for some reason, I do not know. Um, there are rumours, I don't know if this is true, because it nearly brought down the company of uh, GoPro. Um, but anyway, there are rumours they might be making another drone, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, anyway... So we're going back to uh, GoPro, we just talked about that. Top speed apparently was 40 miles per hour, uh, 65K in sports mode. Uh, an improved light bridge system, um, which give you live streams up a distance of 4.3 miles. And if you noticed on the controller, it's got an LCD screen there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, if anything, this is like a, a second screen, really, which is an, another new thing, which I quite enjoyed. We'll get on to what else was that about. So the camera apparently was very similar to the Phantom 4. Um, it's a 12 megapixel camera, it's shot in 4K, went right down to 24 frames per second. It was capable of 96 frames per second when shooting in 1080. That was a full HD camera. Uh, the Maverick Pro folds small enough, uh, and this is another, obviously, another great thing about the, um, God, I haven't done it for so long. <laughs> As you can see, it's not nothing like, obviously, the the smaller drones, the minis and that, um, but in a, in a, yeah, it come with a nice camera bag if you bought the combi pack, um, and it slotted in there. Yeah. I mean, at the time, for a photographer, and I would say this is a photographer's drone, um, not not a first timer. Uh, amazing bit of kit because you could packed up pretty small, especially if you're going abroad in a suitcase, things like that. Um, 
the Marriott Pro, uh, I've, just read, I've just read that bit, it folds up. Um, as you can probably see, I've got my script <laughs> in front of me because there's, so there's so much on there, I can't believe. Um, and, it, and it weighs, believe it or not, 643 grams, which is a lot heavier, uh, probably about three or four uh, Mavic Minis compared to this one. Um, it also has Active Track, Tap and Fly, and Tyrain Follow. Now, I will mention about the Tyrain Follow because I forgot to put it down in the info there. Now, this is something I have never used. I will, when we're going outside to test this drone, which I haven't flown for a couple of years anyway, what I like about this Tyrain Follow is what it is, is if you're, if obviously you're in Follow Me, in the Follow Me mode, if you're going up a mountain, the drone will keep to the same height as what you set it at. So instead of, uh, I think on the old fountains and that, it, it, it would just fly into the base of the hill eventually as, you, as you're climbing up. But this will actually fully use it going up. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that out because I'll be honest, I never tried that out with this Mavic, the Mavic Pro, so that, that'd be pretty good. Uh, the active track includes three flying modes. You've got the spotlight, simple select, a subject for the Mavic Pro to focus on and the camera will continue face it as you're flying, which is a good thing. You've got trace. With the trace, the drone will follow the subject from either behind or front or circle behind it and the profile uh, when the drone will fly uh, alongside of you of the subject. So all, already on the active track, we've got slightly different things. Uh, it's connected up to 20 GPS and GLONASS satellites, so you've got good signal coverage, no worrying about losing um, signal, especially obviously with the Phantoms. That was one of the major problems. You didn't have all, that many GPS, but now you've got over 20, or well, up to 20 GPS satellites on the I should say. Um, in sports modes, it used to fly up to 65K, uh, which is pretty fast. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, the controller, has a built-in phone holder, which was pretty good. And I believe you could probably get a mini iPad in there as well, if I believe I'm right in thinking, because I, I, I like flight using my phone, but obviously sometimes when you're going out, you might maybe not have enough power. Now, I also believe you can zap power from your controller to your phone if you need the phone for some reason. But anyway, I believe you can, and I'll something else I will show you when we're out and about. We can, can we get a mini iPad in there to fly, so you've got a bigger screen to fly with. Uh, and obviously on the LCD screen, it's like a second display. Gives you lots of information about the drone, how far, you know, battery power, how fast it's going, things like that. But also you can have a second controller. So it'd be like a dual remote control. So if there's two of you, one's actually flying the drone, and the other guy will be operating the camera for doing the video shots and um, getting that right photograph. Uh, so this is what I said about this drone to me is more of a photographer's um, drone because um, the camera on it is a lot more, it's got a lot more spec on this camera. Now this camera will um, take JPEG and DN DNG raw and it can take both. So you can have JPEG, and that's what I tend to do. I have JPEG and DN or RAW files at the same time. Um, any, any, of the, any of the drones that have RAW, I always have it in RAW anyway. I find it's a very good feature. Um, apparently on the DJI Go app, um, there's also a feature on there for a flight simulator. So this is a good idea for practicing your flying skills. Now, I wouldn't say that this drone is uh, for a first time flyer, I'll be honest guys, because it, it's an expensive drone, um, but it's got a lot of features on this, especially for a photographer mainly. Um, so, what else have I got on there? Apparently this uh, type of drone now, the DJI Mavic Pro, is being discontinued by um, DJI, and it was only a year ago I believe the end of last year, 2021, 31st of December, I should say, they discontinued it. Because I remember, I mean, I bought this a couple of years back. Um, I, I believe even the Platinum 
model. They brought out a couple different models. You could get a white one. The Platinum had a, I think you had a bit longer flight time on it, uh, but very similar. Right, the pros with the Mavic Pro. <laughs> It's small, it's light, as I said, it's 743 grams. It's got a good range, it's got a fantastic range. This is one of the reasons I love flying this drone. Uh, does very well in the wind, ain't got to worry about the wind. Obviously it's got, one thing I forgot to mention, it's got obstacle avoidance, uh, which is good. Uh, and it's amazing if you're a photographer. Right, the cons. <laughs> hence, hence the name Pro, professional. Uh, the drone, as far as I'm concerned, this drone is designed for a photographer. If he knows is, I mean, I class myself as a photographer, but I don't class myself as a professional or um, I'm, a, I'm what you call Mr. Auto Man. I'm, I love flying my drone, but I don't want to mess about the camera settings. I just want to put it in auto. I know you don't always get the fantastic shot with the light and things like that, but as long as you've got the sun behind you, uh, the drone uh, is dipping a little bit. You don't get no flickering and things like that. But with this type of drone, you do need to know uh, your camera settings, especially. Now, another thing I didn't, I had a problem with. Maybe I'm also not the great, great as a person reading instructions. I had also had a problem with the focusing on this. It's got some different focusing modes on this, and if you don't get it right. Even though it looks fine on your screen when you're flying it, but when you get it back behind the computer, um, you will notice if it's not being done correctly, the sharpness is not there, it's, or it's slightly blurred. That was something a bit annoying. Um, the other thing was, <laughs> was the exposure setting. I didn't realize, I didn't know, as, as I said, I didn't read the instructions, what this wheel's for. And that wheel was to change the light balance on it, so you, the exposure setting. Uh, and I, I've been flying it for must be well over a year, and I was getting a bit peeved sometimes. It always looked a bit washed out. And then somebody, I have to say a big thank you to Harvey, he said to me, that's the exposure wheel, Sean. You just turn it about, and um, it, it, it obviously real was the exposure. Now, the only thing, I, that's another thing I didn't like about this drone, was obviously when you're flying it, you do have to change the settings every now and again. So while it's in flight, you have to look whereabouts you or facing the drone, maybe you're facing the drone towards the sun, so it is gonna be washed out. But yeah, would I recommend you to buy this drone? <laughs> I would say yes and no. Uh, one of the reasons why I would say yes and no, if you, if you are a photographer or you know your camera settings, and my dog's just down there making a lot of noise, um, if you yeah, if you're a photographer, know your camera settings. This is a fantastic drone to get. If it's your first time of buying a drone and you can get this drone for a really good price, I mean, what would I pay for this drone? Um, I suppose maybe still five. If you can get the whole thing, I bought the combi pack where I got the free batteries, uh, the bag, and the, obviously the spare props. Um, yeah then get it but if you're not you know you don't I wouldn't spend too much there are, obviously there are better drones on the market now uh, and we'll talk about later on probably a month or so when I get onto the Mavic Air 2 I mean that, that's an amazing drone but if you want to want to pay out a lot of money it's it's, a, it's an amazing drone um, on our next video we're gonna go out testing it first because I haven't flown this drone for a couple of years now and I want to see how good it well performs. And I'll, hopefully I will read through the instructions so we can go through, especially what I mentioned about the terrain follow thing, because that looks, I never knew about that. <laughs> this shows you that you buy a drone, and you don't realize that some of the features on there that are there to help you. So I'll be looking forward to that. But on the next video, what we're going to do, we're just going to set the drone up, get it connected, see how well it flies. I've all, what I always do is just, do like a box formation with a drone to just make sure everything's working right. Because the last thing you know, you get out there uh, and something goes wrong or it flies off and it shouldn't fly off, but you, d you just don't know, especially when you haven't flown it for quite a long time. You want to see how the batteries um, perform and things like that. Yeah, so 
If you've got any questions, please ask below, as I always say. Uh, hope you enjoy these type of videos. I've had quite a few people now that have had some of my older drones and they, they said, thank you very much, it's brought back some great memories. Unfortunately, I've sold it on now. Uh, and seeing the, the spark or the fountains and that, um, yeah, there are, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm drone nuts and I, I just love a drone. <laughs> I'm drone on a bit, as my wife would say. Anyway, my lights, my light bulbs just kicked in there. Anyway, I'll, I'll better get going or else my light bulbs are going to explode because it's too hot in there. Uh, so I'll catch you on the next video when we go outside and test fly the Mavic Pro.